I, I think a lot of it is just that age where you want it to be right and we've been we've had some success in the past and the fear of this fan coming out and not being accepted the fear that it's not as good as it can be that could be detrimentally crippling yeah of course. you know probably and if i had to you know psychology 101 if i had to I would have to say, well, yeah, that's why it would take 13 years to write something, because you're paranoid that it's not going to be the best it can be, and then you second-guess every single step you make, when it was probably good enough, and I shouldn't say good enough, it was fantastic eight years ago. Yeah. But then the, the, the crippling second-guessing of yourself sets in, and that psychology and that spiral you get in, uh, it can be extremely daunting, and you can actually not even feel it happening. All of a sudden, you just wake up, and all of a sudden, it's 13 years later. The hard part is accepting the fact that maybe you're not nearly as important as you think you are, um, and you should probably just get on with it. Yeah. Is that is that currently a worry, then? Because, I, I as we've discussed, and I won't get into it too much, but... Uh, you know, there's all of a sudden it feels like, um, and please don't take this as as a as a slight, but it feels like now the band is suddenly it's like welcome to 2019. Oh, you're telling me? Yeah, we're on iTunes now. <laughs> That's pretty much the seventh seal of hell breaking open, isn't it? Yeah, I had trumpets. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, sad, shrill. Trumpets. Yeah, but it's a, it, it's a beautiful thing, you know. I yeah, I, I, and I agree. I, I just it's uh, I think part of the hard the hard part with with uh, bands like ours that that want to control every element of everything, they forget that all you needed to control was the writing and the recording. Yeah. Once that thing's done, let other people do what they do with it. Yeah. You know, iTunes is just another record store. Amazon Music is just another record store. Everything you did is done. You did it. Yeah. The good thing is that because of the resurgence of vinyl, because of the tenacity of those small mom and pop stores that were living and existing within their means, they still exist. They weren't greedy. The larger rack stores, the, the Virgin Mega stores, the Tower Records, eh, of course you're gone. Yeah. That stuff's not sustainable. For a start, I feel this, the song is, and I found this myself, so this I'm not actually necessarily asking for um, uh, validation on it, but I found it's a very um, workable banishing ritual, if you know what I mean. Yes, I would characterize that as being uh, within within the parameters of the, of the purpose of, yeah. the, of the vocal for that track, yes. And, you know, I don't, I, don't, I don't know that I would use the word banishing but i would again because banishing is an effort yeah okay balancing you're, 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 yes yeah, the balance and a release yeah. uh, uh as in like a prison release uh, in a way the thing that i i noticed in that song and also obviously with uh numa i mean that means in a classical sense like both breath and spirit correct correct okay so yeah breathing comes into both those songs it made me think of like yogic practice and and how those things like in a very simple way just taking a minute and taking a breath as a means of dealing with everything that's going on around us which is pure chaos it seems yeah my my uh my friends over at chateau tumble we'd always laugh because they know when i'm frustrated because <laughs> they i have a tell my my exhale yeah is my and they go ah he's mad about something <laughs> <laughs> yeah. From a frustration point of view, you know, an exhale can be that release of, of tension that you're hanging on to and, and internalizing. But it can also be a deep breath and a calm exhale of just moving on and through something going, oh, I don't know why I was hanging on to that. Yeah. I, could, I, I am the one holding on to it. It is not holding on to me. Yeah. It doesn't care about me. Yeah. <laughs> it's, yeah. it's just a thing. Whatever that thing is, whatever that personality is, whatever that entity is, uh, it's not. I'm. It's not hanging on to me. It can try, but you know, in all honesty, in your life, you just have to exhale and let those things go. 
and move on. There's this sort of second life that everything takes on or gets to take on, um, where absolutely you finished it, you said this is done. Um, it's, it's a very difficult moment. Um, and for some people, less difficult than others. You know, Adam might think he's totally satisfied with it. I might not be satisfied with it. Yeah. But in the end, we get to go out and play these songs live and almost uh, develop them even further, if not, like, perfect them or, you know, or hone the, the areas that you were insecure about. That was a different kind of uh, vulnerability playing the songs that people that haven't heard yet perfected in the studio playing them live um, sort of going by the seat of your pants really you haven't really figured out how to do all the transitions you're really just trying to achieve what you've recorded which no one's heard yet so yeah. um, that was a little uh, challenging um, and we had a big discussion about whether to do that or not but in the end Danny said to me and he goes look Jess, I had a bad night you know. and he's like just look you can't do anything wrong with these songs. Nobody's ever heard them before. <laughs> so, you know, that, that, that's a, that's a, it's giving me a whole new boost of confidence. How did you decide on those two to, to be the ones that we let out there first? Um, well, we've already sort of teased Descending. We've been playing it for years, actually, yeah. the intro of it, um, with, uh, almost as a segue. Um, and then I think we just all had a vote on what was the most appealing sort of in, m more uh, in your face song that we could uh, play live um, perhaps not the most complicated song that we had to work out um, and it ended up being invincible mm -hmm. uh, just it was a bit more cohesive as a live track um, as far as like it was ready to go we didn't have to study too much to pull it off yeah I know there's going to be a lot of that going on, I would imagine. I think. Yeah, I got my head down right now. <laughs> <laughs> right from that, is what you have to say about that. There's a method, there's a mythology, um, and then there's the reaction to it to keep it fresh, to keep it emotional, to keep it in the moment. Um, and that's a that's a really hard puzzle to make uh, to balance to keep your feet in that. Um, reacting in the moment and yet making sure that you can be objective and look at it and tweak it and make sure that it fits what's happening rather than just being um, a reaction but that is part of the goal is to make sure that there is that freshness that I bring to the table is that the way it's always been or is that is that more so now would you say I would say way more so now yeah. because because you have four strong personalities all fighting for space. Uh, so over the years, uh, I've had to just step out of the room to let them fight it out. Uh, because just to have another opinion in the room, it gets, if you think it's gridlocked now, uh, to have a fourth arrogant person in the war room is not gonna help anybody. So you have, to, you have to understand when there's too many chefs and just step out, let them get there and then step in and do your magic when they're done yeah and do you think that you've become better at that through um... way better you know with age comes that uh, the compromise is not the right word um, understanding of it understanding more and being able to understand what to let go of everything is so important when you're 22 hmm. you can't let go of anything and you know what he said I'll never forget and you get to a certain age where you start unloading the baggage and you realize what's important and what's not important and pick your battles, but also focus on where you're going. There was no compromise this time, you know? No, yeah. Not from anyone. Um, and, you know, I think that's, it's basically everything we, we had to give. Um, there was no, um, thought of what it should be or what it could be it was literally like everyone needs to be happy take it all the way if we're ever going to finish this thing it's got to be something that satisfies all of us and, uh, and kind of uh, almost a little blinkered you know um, from, the, from what people think um, in the end I think that's really the, the only sake we have is, is just the four of us together 
making the music that we're good at making together or the music that comes out of us yeah um without you know compromising that to what it should be or, or expectations become of it so that's really what this represents to me yeah yeah for sure there's there's moments on it though that that i think are almost nods to the band's like like lineage and history like there's certain moments that really made me feel like like when i first discovered the band when i first heard like opiate and, and undertow oh, that's cool. you know that's, yeah that's great to be honest there's, there's some pieces individual riffs uh, or rhythms that were written before i was even in the band so you're talking 30 years ago that never got used and um, i think um, Adam's a real advocate of that, you know, just never throw anything away, keep it in the vault. Um, yeah. Those really great ideas that didn't make it up to, you know, whatever song it was we'd been at the time, they're going to have their time and place. And there's some moments on the album that marry the, you know, the new tool um, or new ideas with some stuff that's been sitting around, kind of waiting to be used. Um, and obviously it's relevant because it came from the same people. So yeah, I yeah. think that's maybe that's maybe what you, you're getting out of that. If you're into geometry, if you have a, a compass and a pencil and you start drawing pictures and doing your your uh, your circles and and uh, and points, you can accidentally draw five-pointed, four-pointed, three-pointed, six-pointed objects yeah. with just a, just a simple compass and a pencil and an angle. Just a compass and a pencil, honestly. But uh, when you want to get into anything beyond that with a seven, anything uh, seven-based, you are now actively, you, have, you are now a human. Yeah. You have now moved into the realm of, of conscious effort because that is not a simple angle to calculate you have to be a conscious being to use measurements to get to a seven okay what well, so it doesn't it doesn't sit naturally within nature then um it shows up but not yeah that doesn't it doesn't show up in if you look in cross section of seeds apples uh yeah it's the, generally the, the Fibonacci spirals those are all those are all other you know sixes twos threes sometimes fives, but never, doesn't really end up being seven. Okay. As far as the geometric structure, that's a, that's a physical measurement we have to make. In uh, religious practices and, and uh, those conscious um, Gnostic practices, the seven, that number is a divine number because all of a sudden you've connected with spirit, you've connected with consciousness by consciously drawing a seven-pointed star or a seven-pointed uh, box. Yeah, I started looking into it as well and thinking about it from like Tarot and I Ching, I Ching perspectives as well. Like the seventh uh, major arcana and the seventh hexagram in the I Ching both essentially mean the same thing, which is like discipline and organization and determination and decision. And right, recognizing patterns. So if you see the pattern, recognize the pattern, you can now react and plan to the pattern. I think in the, in the last few records we've done, there was a bit more of five and six, which have a different feel. And for one reason or other, a lot of the stuff we were coming out with was, was in seven. And once we once we realized that, we started to see it in other riffs. I mean, there's a, there's a last track called Tempest, yeah. which is a riff that I came up with on, a, you know, it was like Walking the Dogs, real percussive riff, but it's actually a, a, a riff counted out into 21 beats and as soon as I brought that in Danny was like well that's I'm going to play 7 over that because you know 7 goes into 21 yeah. and it suddenly like transformed the whole thing now suddenly this is related to all the other songs so I think we saw the correlation of what was going on with you know when you're writing you're all inspiring each other and you're all kind of listening to what each other's doing mm. and it kind of propels you forward in a similar kind of vein and I think once we saw that happening that really was key to us hitting the finish line you know and i think maynard really like dug in on those themes as well and you know it, it all becomes reflective of itself um now it suddenly becomes a big theme of the album um and maybe to start with it was just just a feeling and now it's you know now you can call it a number 